Okay, so now we'll come back. So the next, basically, there there is two questions basically left here in this part of the text, and then after that we will get to the exercises. But first, let's take a look at this, these two questions. Example number six is that a manufacturer produces bolts of a fabric with a fixed width. A bolt of a fabric is nothing but basically something like this, meaning that this is a bolt of a fabric like a, like a roll of a fabric. And of course it has a fixed width and then there is a, then there is a there, there, essentially there is some length to it as well for example 100 yards 200 300 yards that is that has been essentially that, that that has been rolled together in the form of a roll or bolt you can call essentially you can call it as well exactly you can see the same thing over here right so <coughs> Now the cost of producing x yards of this fabric is c is equal to f of x which is in, in dollars which means that x is essentially in yards and c is basically in um, in dollars meaning the cost is in dollars and the and the length of the fabric is in is in yards and c is a function of x essentially right Meaning that the cost is a function of the of the number of yards. Now the first part of this question is what is the meaning of the derivative f prime of x and what are the units, right? So the meaning of the of the derivative is basically you can think of this situation in the following way. For example, you could you could essentially um, you could think of this as you could think of essentially this situation. For example, this f of x as this function over here, which is f of x is equal to x squared. And then you can imagine that basically you have the cost along this axis, right? And you have the essentially the length of the fabric along this axis, which means that this is one yard, two yard, three yards, four yards, and so on and so forth. This is one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, and so on and so forth, right? And then what this means is that is that basically for one yard the cost is one dollar, for two yards the cost becomes four dollars, for three yards the cost becomes nine dollars, and so on and so forth. Which means that uh, first of all, the cost is increasing, right? That the cost itself, it's a the cost function itself is an increasing function, and also the cost per, uh, also basically the cost per yard is also increasing. What I mean by that is that basically the essentially for as you can see, for one yard, you the cost is one dollar, which is one dollar per yard, right? For two dollars, basically the cost is for two yards, the cost is four dollars, which would be four divided by two, which is two dollars per yard. And then for three yards, the cost is nine dollars, which is three three dollars per yard, and so on and so forth, meaning that the cost per yard is increasing as you increase the number of yards essentially, right? Um, which means that basically, um, which means that essentially the, um, Now, now basically, now essentially this, essentially what is, what is, what is important here is that, well, you have along, essentially along this axis, you have the cost in dollars and you have basically the number of yards, or essentially the long, the length of the fabric in yards along this axis. 
and um, basically the um, the um, uh, basically the there is there is there is some rate of change for essentially for this function there is essentially you could imagine that there is an average rate of change and there is an instantaneous rate of change for this function meaning that for example if you want to know what is if you want to know what is the average rate of change for this function in some interval you can calculate that you can also calculate the instantaneous rate of change for this function at every point now suppose that for example you want to know the average rate of change of the cost with respect to the to the number of yards for this function when you go from the length of the fabric is equal to one one yard essentially all the way up to when the length of the fabric is three yards for example so so what do you do so you know that basically when the length of the fabric is one is one yard the cost is one dollar when the length of the fabric is three yards, the cost becomes basically nine dollars, right? So, so essentially, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say when, when essentially when x, when essentially when the length, when the length is basically one yard, then basically the cost is, the cost is basically one dollar right when the length is when the length is three yards then the cost becomes basically nine dollars right now this basically in this in this case this is essentially your x and this is your f of x in this case essentially again this is your x and this is your f of x right um, now, how do you calculate the average rate of change for a function? So basically, you're, essentially you have this function over here. You have essentially a point over here. You have also you have also some point over here, and this point over here is, for example, one comma one. This point is one comma one, and this point over here is three comma nine, right? So the average rate of change would be the slope of the line that you could that you could draw through these two points. And the average rate of change would be the slope of this line. And the slope of this line would be basically 9 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. 9 minus 1 over 3 minus 1, which would be the same thing as 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. Now you you can see that basically that this nine is nine dollars, this one is one dollar, this three is three yards, and yd, and this one is one yard. That means that basically dollar minus dollar essentially is going to give you dollar, and yard minus yard is going to give you yard which means that the unit over here becomes dollars per yard so that means that basically an average <coughs> that means that basically on average the um, the the cost is increasing this essentially tells us that on average the cost, the production cost, the production cost is increasing, is increasing at a rate of, at a rate of basically four dollars per yard on the interval. And the interval basically one two three essentially. That means that the when when we say on the interval one two three, that means that when when essentially when the length of the fabric is one 
basically one one yard and this means the length of the fabric is three yards so in this basically in this interval the average rate of change of cost with respect to with respect to the number of yards is basically four dollars per yard right that's the average rate of change right now you can also find the instantaneous rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change would, would for example, that, that you could consider only at one single point, meaning that the instantaneous rate of change you could consider it at this point as the tangent line to the, to the function at this point. And that you could, you could calculate using, um, um, some basic, you could, you could calculate using some limit, for example, the limit of you could calculate the, essentially the f prime of, for example, 1, right? f prime of 1 would be the instantaneous rate of change of cost with respect to, with respect to the number of yards. Which means that, um, <coughs> which means that exactly at, exactly after we have produced one yard, uh, after we have produced one yard, the cost is changing, basically, is changing with respect to the number of yards at a rate of, for example, so many, basically, dollars per yard or something like that, right? So how do you calculate this? So you know that, basically, you know that F prime of a is the same thing as the limit of, for example, f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches 0, right? Now, in this case, a is equal to 1, so, and your function is, for example, f of x is equal to x squared, right? Your function is equal to f of x is equal to x squared, so then f of so in this, since, since a is equal to 1, then f of 1 would be equal to 1 squared, which is equal to 1, right? And f of a plus h would be f of 1 plus h, which would be the same thing as 1 plus h raised to the second power, which is 1 squared 1, h squared h squared, and plus 2 times h. So then you could say that basically f prime of 1, meaning that the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 1, is equal to the limit of basically f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h as h approaches 0, right? Which means that, which means that this is the same thing as basically the limit of f of 1 plus h is the same thing as 1 plus h squared plus 2 times h minus f of 1, which is minus 1 over h, as h approaches 0. This is, this you can cancel out. You can write this as the limit of basically h times h plus 2 over h as h approaches 0. These two you can cancel out. When h approaches 0, this becomes a 2, right? And of course, we know that we know that the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 1, for example, which happens to be 2, and that is 2 basically dollars per yard, that is 2 dollars per yard, is the slope of this line over here, is the slope of this line over here, right? Now, we can, of course, draw the tangent line to the to the graph of this function and see essentially what is the what is the slope of the line at exactly at this point right the way that you can do this is that you can imagine that you have uh, you can imagine that you have basically um, your function over here which is f of x is equal to x squared and some point essentially on the graph of this function would be, for example, it would be a comma f of a, right? If I call the point a comma f of a and do a slider for a, then when a is equal to 1.2, then f of a would be calculated using the 
essentially using f of x and well then as i change essentially a that then this point is tracing the, the graph of our function right and um, so now how can i essentially write the the equation of a of a, of a line that goes through this point and is tangent to the graph of the function at the same point how do i do that so you know that the, the equation of a straight line you can write it as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 right so the point is essentially the point happens to be a comma f of a right is a comma f of a so the point the essentially x1 comma y1 happens to be in this case a comma f of a and we know that basically that since the line is supposed to be tangent to the graph of the function the slope of the line is supposed to be equal to the derivative of the function at the same point the derivative of the function at the same point would be essentially f prime at the point a which is which is f prime of a right which means that then the equation essentially y1 becomes f of a x1 becomes a so i can write this as y minus f of a is equal to f prime of a times x minus x minus a that in this particular case at least i can write the equation of the line this way right so if i do this if i if i essentially and i have written the exact same formula over here y minus f of a is equal to f prime of a which is the derivative of the function at a and the calculator does understand the concept of the derivative because somebody has programmed all of these concepts into the calculator times x minus a and you can see that if i set the value of a to 1 if i set the value of a to 1 which would be this point over here you can see that well of course at any point the, the line is tangent to the graph of the function as i change the value of a the, the, the slope of the line changes so that the line remains at every point tangent to the graph of the function but particularly at a is equal to 1 you can see that the value of f prime of a which is the slope of this line happens to be a 2 which is essentially what we have calculated over here right so so for the first part of this question we can say that for the first part of this question we can say that um, So the question essentially was what is the meaning of the derivative f prime of x so f prime of x is the same thing that we found essentially that that we just found which is what we found was f prime of one or you can also call it f prime of a or you can in general you can call it f prime of x right so this is the derivative of the function which is not the average rate of change but the instantaneous rate of change right and so basically then you could say that f prime of x you could say that f prime of x is um, that the instantaneous rate of change instantaneous rate of change of c which is the cost function which is essentially the cost of production with respect to x with respect to x that is that is f prime of x 
it means the rate of change of the production cost means the rate of change of the rate of change of production production cost um, with respect to the number of yards produced with respect to the number of yards produced right and it's it's it's, it's essentially this happens to have essentially a particular uh, a particular essentially there is a particular label for this in in economics and um, economists basically call this rate of change economists basically call this this rate of change the marginal cost the marginal cost okay now about the unit as and, and we saw that basically that the unit happens to be dollars per yard because because well um, it's the it's essentially we are talking about the rate of change of cost and over here we have x which is in yards and this is in dollars right so and the uh, the way that you calculate essentially this rate of change you calculate essentially um, f prime of x you calculate it as the limit of delta c by delta x as delta x approaches zero right so delta c is basically some cost essentially the the um, uh, the essentially it it's it's the difference of two costs for example f of x2 minus f of x1 for example f of x2 is in dollars f of x1 is in dollars um, so dollars minus dollars is going to give you dollars so that means that this essentially becomes dollars um, and delta x is the same thing as delta x is the same thing as something like x2 minus x1 this is in yards this is also in yards which means that yards minus yards is going to give you yards right and uh, so essentially long story short the the uh, the 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 the, um, the this rate of change essentially you you calculate it this way and it's going the unit for this is going to be the same as the unit for the difference quotient delta c by delta x and we know that delta c is measured in dollars and delta x is measured in yards right and so as a result the the unit for therefore the unit for the unit for basically for f prime of x is basically dollars per yard dollars per yard so that's that's basically the first part of this question now the second part is in practical terms what does it mean to say that f prime of thousand is equal to nine in practical terms what does it mean to say that what does it mean to say that f prime of thousand is equal to nine so when you say f prime of thousand is equal to nine that means that basically if you have your function for example something like this and 
if for example if this point is thousand then basically the tangent to the graph of this function at this point would have the slope over here m is equal to 9 that means that the slope of this line which is tangent to the graph of the function so this is x and this is y when x is equal to 1000 you will find essentially some point on the graph of the function right at that point you can draw a, a line tangent to the graph of the function the slope of this tangent line is equal to 9 that means that the instantaneous rate of change for the function at this point is nine dollars per yard right this nine means essentially nine dollars per yard meaning that for every after essentially meaning that after you have produced thousand yards of fabric then then essentially the then if you want to produce essentially one additional yard the cost would be um, the cost would essentially the cost would increase by 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 nine dollars essentially that's that's what it means right so then basically you could say that the statement that the text over here says that basically the statement that f prime of thousand is equal to nine means that after thousand yards of fabric have been manufactured the meaning is the meaning is when we say basically f prime of thousand is equal to nine that means that after after one thousand yards of fabric have been produced have been produced the rate at which the production cost is increasing the rate at which the production cost is increasing is basically nine dollars per yard is nine dollars per yard meaning that that is to say that essentially when when x is equal to thousand which is this point over here c is increasing c is increasing nine times as fast as x nine times as fast as as x nine times as fast as x okay so now the next part of this question it's just it's it's kind of like a matter of a, of of probability or opinion or even opinion or something like this so the question is which which do you think is greater f prime of 50 or f prime of 500 and what about f prime of basically 5000 so we're talking about f prime of 50 and f prime of basically 500 and also we're talking about f prime of 5000 now the text over here has says that has said that that the rate at which the production cost is increasing per yard is probably lower probably is probably lower when x is equal to when x is equal to 500 then than when x is equal to 50 um, meaning that the cost of making the 500th yard is less than the so what, what this what this also means is that the cost of the cost of basically of producing or making essentially making the 500th yard is 
is less than the cost of the 50th yard. Is less than making, is less than the cost of, <coughs> less than the cost of making the, making the 50th yard. Right? So this is essentially something that you need to take into consideration. Essentially, the, the fact that we essentially we are, we have essentially in this case essentially we have a function that this is the cost of production. This is the cost of production, and this is essentially the length in the length of fabric essentially in yards, right? And essentially you have some function for example something like this and there is essentially some rate of change um, if basically if essentially um, if um, f of 500 if essentially if I say that f prime of 500 is less than f prime of 50 right uh, what that what that means is that basically that when x is equal to when x is equal to 500 what this means is that when x is equal to 500 essentially the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function is lower than is lower than the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at 50 meaning that for example in this case we are talking about the line with this slope whereas in this case we are talking about the line for example with this slope right and the slope of this line is the is less than the slope of this line so if essentially if this line represents basically the instantaneous rate of change of the function when x is equal to 500 and the slope of this line represents, for example, the instantaneous rate of change of the function when x is equal to 50. What that means is that um, when x is equal to 500, essentially the cost is uh, increasing. Um, the cost is increasing um, well based on essentially based on the based on the the, the 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 slope of this line over shear whereas when 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 essentially when x is equal to 50 the cost is increasing essentially based on the slope of this line meaning that going with the slope of this line essentially with one unit of with one unit of change meaning that meaning that with one more yard of production the cost would have would have would have essentially would have increased so many units whereas in this case with one one unit of basically horizontal change which is one yard of production the cost would not change that much right which is to say that basically that the cost of making the 500th yard is less than basically that the cost of making the 50th yard that's that's the that's essentially why we can we can essentially make this a statement in the first place, right? Now, if this is the case, and the reason that the reasoning that, that the text has used for this is that the manufacturer essentially the manufacturer makes more efficient use of the fixed costs of production. So essentially that the the the, the, the reasoning is the reasoning is basically more efficient use of more efficient use of uh, the fixed costs of production of the fixed costs of of production. Now, whatever that means, I don't really know. I don't know much about economics but uh, that's essentially the reasoning that the text has used here
now about basically about this part over here which is f prime of 5000 that's essentially the instantaneous rate of change when x is equal to 5000 which means that the, the the rate at which the cost is is increasing or is changing with respect to the number of yards produced when basically when you get to 5000 yards of fabric essentially so that essentially over here the text says that but as production expands meaning that as you get to 5000 the resulting large scale operation might become inefficient large scale operation might become inefficient and there might be overtime costs thus it is possible that the rate of increase of costs um, will eventually start to rise so it may happen that so then you could say that it is possible that or it is very likely that 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 basically f prime of 5000 is greater than f prime of basically 500 again i i don't know much about economics that's essentially i'm giving you the exact same thing that i see in this text okay so that's that's all about that Okay, so now the next question is basically um, the next question is question example number seven, which is um, so you have we have essentially a table of values, meaning that the function is has been defined essentially only using a table of values. We have no relationship between x and y or t or anything and no algebraic basic t relationship okay so we have essentially we have t which is 1980 1985 1990 all the way up to 2000 this is year 1980 and so on and so forth and this is d of t which is the u.s national debt at time t right meaning that in the in the end of the year 1980 for example the u.s national debt was 930.2 basically in billions of dollars in the end of the year 19 for example 85 it's it's been 1945.9 billions of dollars and so on and so forth now what do you what do you what do you want to do is that we want to interpret the and estimate the value of d prime of 1990 d prime of 1990 meaning the uh, the derivative of the function at t is equal to 1990 meaning at the end of the year 1990 so normally essentially how you would calculate the derivative is basically you would you could calculate this as d prime of or essentially you could write f prime of 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 basically of um, of um, there is some there was some equation over here equation number five if i'm not mistaken we said that f prime of a is equal to the limit of basically f of x minus f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a right now what this means is that basically you have some you have essentially some function like this and basically this is this point is a and this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and this is some x and this is basically f of x and this is f and this is f of a and so the instantaneous rate of change of this function at this point would be the slope of this line and of course you can draw a line between these two points as well something like this and um, f of x minus f of a would be essentially this this rise over here if this is f of x minus f of a and x minus a is this run over here which means that this 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 uh, 
fraction is basically the slope of this line over here, right? So when you take the, the limit of this as x approaches a, then essentially the, the, the slope of the line gets closer and closer to the slope of this line, which means that this whole limit would calculate essentially the slope of the tangent line at x is equal to a, right? And that's essentially the meaning of this of this of this um, expression over here. That's one way of calculating the one way of calculating the the instantaneous rate of change. Which means that basically for this particular case you could write basically for example f prime of for example nineteen ninety would be the same thing as the limit of for example f of f of x or in this case you, you have to write essentially d of t d of t minus essentially f of a which would be um, minus f of a which would be essentially d of 1990 over basically over essentially t minus 1990 as t approaches as t approaches 1990 right something like that so that way you could that way essentially you could write this this expression and then if you had Essentially, if you had the um, d of t, you would be able to calculate this, right? But the problem is that, that we don't have essentially d of t over here. And so, since and essentially we don't have any algebraic relationship between, between essentially d of t and t, so we cannot use this, this expression over here. What we can do is that you can see that over here basically um, at 19 at t is equal to 1990 we have the value of the function right in 19 at t is equal to 1985 we have the value of the function at t is equal to 1995 we have the value of the function right so what i could do is that you could you could imagine that for example this is this is t for example and this is d of t right and you could imagine that this is for example 19 this is 1985 this is 1990 and this is for example 1995 and you can see that these values are increasing meaning that um, Roughly, we can say that, for example, the output of the function is over here, then it's increasing like this, and then it's increasing, for example, um, something like this, for example, something like this. And so, of course, the, 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 the value of d of t over the years has, has increased. And there is, there is essentially some rate of change over here. There is also some rate of change over here, right? So what what we can do is that we can we can calculate this rate of change because we know the the output of the function at this point. We know the output of the function at this point, so we can calculate the average rate of change in this interval, which would be the slope of this line, right? We can also calculate the average rate of change of the function in this interval, which would be the slope of this blue line over here. And then we could take basically the, the, uh, we could take essentially the, the, um, the, the average of the two, the, the average of the two, uh, values and call it basically the, the instantaneous rate of change at t is equal to 1990 that we can do right another thing that you can do is that is that basically you could 
you could essentially build a function for this situation and the way that you would do that is that for example you could write this this information as for example um, you would start you would start this as you would start this at, at at for example you would call this t is equal to zero or x is equal to zero and then you would call this five and you would call this ten and you would call this fifteen and you would call this twenty right so that things are easier to do on a on a graph and then basically you could you could basically find um you could essentially do a table of values meaning that you could essentially in Desmos you could do a table of values and say that for example when x is equal to 0 the value of, of y is 930.2 for example when x is equal to 5 the value of y is 1945.9 when, when y is equal to for example 10 the value of y is basically 32 33.3 when 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 x is equal to 15 the value of y is 4970.0 when the value of x is equal to 20 the value of y is 56 for example 74.2 right and then you would you would have essentially some points over here You would have essentially these points over here so the value of x goes from 0 to 20 the value of y goes from 930 to 5674 so let's let's change this this viewing rectangle over here call it for example um, negative 1 2 for example 25 and the value of y let's call it let's go from 900 to 6000 right so that that's that's going to be so that that's essentially 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 points over here and then you need to take a look at your points you need to take a look at your points and then basically use some sort of regression for example you need to essentially use a model so that basically you can build a model for your data so i would say that for example for this model if you if you were to use a quadratic model for example a quadrat quadratic model in desmos you 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 would write it as y1 and then you need to use the tilde sign and then a times um a times x squared now that doesn't work so let me find this and this one so a quadratic model is of course ax squared plus bx plus c so then you could write ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c so i can write for example a x1 squared plus bx for example bx1 plus c for example and well it's not a very good model R squared is equal to 0 0.9868. So this is essentially the model that Desmos has created for this case, meaning that it goes through your data in this manner, for example, something like this it's not very bad but you can also build a, a, a linear model right a linear model would essentially would look something like this a linear model would be 
page 60 you you could write page 60 for example y1 and then till the sign um, ax uh, a linear model in decimals linear model in decimals would be linear regression and a linear regression would be mx1 plus b would be mx1 ax1 let's call it ax1 plus a b and uh, well this is much closer to what we have what we have here so i'm going to go for the x-axis i'm going to go from for example um negative 5 to for example to 25 and so as you can see one two three four five so everything kind of fits together it's not a very good model but but we can use it right so then you can use then the calculator gives you these values meaning a is equal to 250.242 and b is equal to 848.3 for example and then using that you can write the equation of a line meaning that you can say that for example, y is equal to a is equal to 250.242 times x plus the value of b, which is 848.3, which is essentially this line over here. And now you can forget about your model, right? And then based on this model, you will be able to find the, 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 uh, basically the, um, you will be able to find basically the, the instantaneous rate of change of this function at any point and since it's a straight line this essentially gives you the, the slope of the line is 250.242 which means that at any point the instantaneous rate of change of this function is well 250.242 you can call it d prime of 1 d prime of 2 d prime of 3 d prime of 4 or d prime of any point in time for that matter because the slope of this this line essentially never changes okay now this is one way to do it another way to do this is to use essentially this model meaning that you could use essentially this model over here and then basically based on that you can say that for example you can say that y is equal to the value of a you, you can read it from here for example which is for example negative point four nine six four nine six for example two eight six times x squared plus b which is plus two hundred sixty 0.168 times x plus c plus 823 point for example 0.486 which is this line over here so this essentially you can use this function as well and you need to essentially do all of your calculation based on this model for example which would give you for example um, now if you if you differentiated this function if you differentiated this function now I'm going to do it without the limit because using the limit it's going to take a whole lot of time so the function that I got here was the function that I got over here was uh, negative so so essentially y is equal to negative 0 point 0 0.4962 times x squared plus 260.168 times x for example plus 823.486 right now i'm going to i'm going to differentiate this function using the calculator itself 
meaning that I'm going to call this f of x f of x and so then what I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to calculate f prime of x f prime of x which is the derivative of this function and I'm going to calculate the f prime of x at 19 at 1990 which happens to be in this case essentially 10 so I have to calculate f prime of 10 so then f prime of 10 happens to be 250.24228 which is um, the exact same value that we got using the linear model as well, right? So this seems to be the correct value, okay? But now if you do the same thing without essentially, without building a model, what you would get is that, what you would get is essentially the, what you would get is basically you could calculate all of these all of these values in a table based on this based on this this difference quotient right meaning that you could say that you could calculate this value for different values of t right meaning that you could say that for example this is the value of t and then you can calculate d of t minus for example d of 1990 over for example t minus 1990 right um, and then of course 1990 itself you would not be able to calculate you have to calculate each each and every one of these meaning 1980 1985 1995 and 2000 these you can calculate so you can calculate 1980 19 1985 1990 you, you cannot calculate 1995 and 2000 right so now uh, so now you need to take essentially the average rate of change for each of these points in time and and 1990 right so for example, D of 1980 was was basically 930.2. 930.2. D of um D of basically um D of 1990 was 32 32.33. 32.33.3. And then T was basically 1980 minus 1990, right? That way you can calculate this. So this is the same thing as 3233.3 minus, for example, 930.2. And then with a negative sign. So that's a 1, for example, that's a 3, that's a 0, that's a 12 minus is equal to 3. 303 so that's a negative 300 303.1 divide that by a negative 10 1980 minus 1990 is negative 10 the negative signs you can cancel out and that would be 3 point There's something wrong here. There is a um, there is a two over here as well. Two hundred thirty. So that's two hundred thirty. This is wrong. Excuse me. <clears throat> so this this should be essentially negative twenty three o three point one divided by negative ten. These two you can cancel out. That becomes 230.31. 230.31 divided. And that, that's essentially this value over here. 230.31, right? So in the exact same way, you can calculate all of these values. 
which means that basically you can give this to a calculator um, so for example b of 1985 was 1945 was 1945.9 1945.9 minus the of the of 1990 which is 3233.3 and divide that by uh basically t which is 19 uh 1985 minus 1990 right so that's 257.48 for example the next one you can calculate in the exact same way that would be 1995 so d of 1995 is the same thing as 49 so you have to change this that's 49 Seven zero, and this is nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five, and that's three forty seven point uh, point three four, for example, right? And then the next one is basically you have to change this. Call it five six seven four point two, for example, and this is two thousand. That becomes 244 on essentially 0 0.09 so I write these values over here so 1985 is 257 257.48 um, and the other value is 347.34 and the other value is 244.09 right now it's important to understand the meaning of the meaning of these values so the meaning of these values is essentially you can see it on this graph so um, so you can see that this is the value for 19 um, this is the value for 1980 this this is the value for 1980 this is the value for 1985 this is the value for 1990 1995 and 2000 and the essentially these average rates of change this is between 1980 and 1990 meaning meaning essentially if you were to um, 1990 is essentially this this value over here is this value over here meaning that if you drew a line between this point and this point the slope of that point would be 230.31 if you drew a line between between basically between this point and this point the slope of the line would be essentially this value which is something very close to 257 if you drew a line between between this point and this point over here between essentially these two points this point and this point over here the slope of that line would be 347.3 or so if you drew a line between this point and this point over here the slope of that line would be 244.09 right so now you can imagine that you draw a line between these two points and the slope of that line becomes something that we have calculated here you draw a line between these two points again you can you will you will get the slope of the line essentially over here um, 85 and 95 and then basically what we can do is that we can take this the, the two slopes and take the average of the two slopes meaning that 257 point for example 48 and add to that 347.34 add these together you get 12 1 7 8 0 and then 14 1 and 10 and 1 and 5 6 and if you divide this by 2 you would get something like 0.5 
you would get something like 604.32 divided by 4 that would be 302 this divided by 2 would be 302 point for example 41 right which you can call basically 303 so that means that basically you can take this number as basically as d prime of as an approximation to d prime of 1990 meaning that you could say that basically d prime of 1990 is equal to is approximately equal to 303 basically and then you have to you have to of course mention the units right the unit is basically um, this is the rate of change of the US national debt with respect to time and the time was in in, in in years essentially and the US national debt was of course in dollars so that means that this is excuse me in billions of dollars that means that the unit becomes essentially billions of becomes basically billions of dollars 303 billions of dollars per year which essentially means that essentially that the US national debt and in the end of in the end of the year 1990 was increasing at the rate of 330 billions of dollars per year meaning that every year basically the the US national debt was inc was increasing by 330 billions of dollars essentially okay so um, that's basically a couple of ways to basically solve these types of problems um, Now at this point, basically the text says that based that 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 in examples three, six, and seven, we saw three specific examples of rates of change. The velocity of an object is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. Uh, marginal cost is the rate of change of production cost with respect to the number of items produced, and the rate of change of the debt with respect to time is of interest in economics. Uh, here is a small sample of other rates of change. For example, in physics, the rate of change of work with respect to time is called power. Um, chemists who study a chemical reaction are interested in the rate of change in the concentration of a reactant with respect to time, which is called the rate of reaction. A biologist is interested in the rate of change of the population of a colony uh, of bacteria with respect to time, for example. In fact, in the, the, the computation of rates of change is important in all of the natural sciences, in engineering, and even in the social sciences. Further examples will be given in section 3.7. All these rates of change are derivatives and can therefore be interpreted as slopes of tangents. This gives added significance to the solution of the tangent problem. Whenever we solve a problem involving tangent lines, we are not just solving a problem in geometry, we are also implicitly solving a, gr a great variety of problems involving rates of change in science and engineering. Okay. Okay, so now basically in the in the in the con essentially continuing this text, there is about fifty-two or exactly fifty-two exercises, um, which we will go through in the next videos. Thank you.